it's Friday. It's Pizza Friday. It's Pizza, pizza Friday. Friday. Yeah, in Florida, all my grandkids, they do Pizza Friday. Wow. Pizza Friday. I'm now going to be hungry I for like pizza that. all day. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, and this, today's uh, segment, we're really focusing on honoring our mothers. Yes. You all that are mothers, we appreciate you very much. And Robert, you mailed your card today to your mother. Oh, and I actually mailed it. Mailed it a couple days ago. Yes. Yeah. So that it would make sure to get there on time. That's impressive. Because yes. I usually miss it. Get there after Because it would mine, be too late if you good. waited till today. That's true. <laughs> that's all right. I told my mom that you were sending the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was your paycheck. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, well, it's only money. That's right. Anyway, we, so I was just in thinking through songs that would be fun for mothers. This is a song that everybody, it's one of those that gets stuck in your head and you you enjoy it for an extended period of time. So that's why we're going to sing Life is Precious. Yes, and I remember holding little Carter in my arms. We started singing this oh, yeah. wow. when, he, when he was just in my arms. We should try that now. <laughs> yeah, like try that now. <laughs> so looking up at him. He's taller than her. <laughs> okay, let's go. Sometimes I drive too fast, sometimes I risk it all, sometimes I'm reckless, act like I'm made of steel, but I'm just flesh and bone, a product of the fall, still I have purpose, and this I know to be real. Life is precious, life is sweet, like the earth beneath my feet, though I know I'm passing through, I know I belong to you. Life is precious, life is sweet, and this truth makes it complete. Knowing Jesus died for me, life is precious. Life is precious, life is sweet. I can't see past myself when I get depressed. I take for granted this life you've given me. There are a million ways I've been so richly blessed. I can't imagine not being able to see. Life is precious, life is sweet, like the earth beneath my feet. Though I know I'm passing through, I know I belong to you. Life is precious, life is sweet, when this truth makes it complete. Knowing Jesus died for me, life is precious. Life is precious, life is sweet. And Galatians 2.20 says this. Life is precious, life is sweet, like the earth beneath my feet. Though I know I'm passing through, I know I belong to you. Life is precious, life is sweet, and this truth makes it complete. Knowing Jesus died for me, life is precious. Life is precious. Life is precious, life is sweet. Life is precious. Life is precious, life is sweet. Life is precious, precious, precious. Fun song. Fun song to sing, fun song. Great words. A relationship with Jesus Christ means everything. So when we were thinking of songs to play, I asked Bill, I said, what it was your mom's favorite song? And he told me that her favorite song was Jesus, What a Friend for Sinners, also known as Our Great Savior. So I thought I would just quickly tell you a little bit about the song. It was written by John Wilbur Chapman. He was a Presbyterian pastor and evangelist who ministered in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. By his own admission, he could not pinpoint the date of his conversion to Christ, but did look at an incident at age 17 as the day of my acknowledgement of Christ. 
His parents prepared him for a life of Christian ministry, and after seminary, he alternated between various pastorates and evangelistic work, spending a total of around 18 years in each sort of ministry and preaching over 50,000 sermons to audiences totaling over 60 million. One source relates that at one of his pastors, a member told him, you are not a very strong preacher, but a few of us have decided to gather and pray every Sunday morning for you. <laughs> Isn't that a great that idea? That is an idea, a great idea. His pastoral ministry was well-received and was marked by the growth of his various churches by the conversion of people to Christ. In his evangelistic work, he was tireless. In his day, no one had preached in as many nations as Chapman did. For he preached not only across the United States, including Minneapolis in 1905, but held evangelistic campaigns across the world, including Canada, Philippines, Hong Kong, China, Korea, Japan, England, Wales, Ireland, Australia, Scotland, New Zealand, India, Sri Lanka, and the Fiji Islands. Chapman once said, the rule which governs my life is this, anything that dims my vision of Christ or takes away my taste for Bible study or cramps me in my prayer life, or makes Christian work difficult is wrong for me, and I must, as a Christian, turn away from it. Within this present hymn, we find in turn a number of descriptions of Jesus tied to the various forms of aid he provides for all of us who are his. Number one, do we fall short of the glory of God? Jesus is the sinner's loving friend who makes us whole. Are we susceptible to temptation? Jesus is our strength and weakness. He wins the victory. Are we faced with sorrow and deep waters? Jesus is our help and our comfort. Are we in need of direction and protection? Jesus is our guide and our keeper. interesting it was written in 1881 the composer was Charles Fry and I have to do a little bit of investigation about that because Charles Fry was also the man who started Turkey Hill shops oh really yeah he was an amazing guy in fact he was on the board at uh, Sandy Cove and also on the board at Lancaster Bible College and one of the new buildings was named in his honor so I'm curious whether they were related <laughs> but it says that he wrote this hymn based on Song of Solomon, verses 2, 1 to 4. I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Like a lily among the thorns, so is my darling among the maidens. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest, so is my beloved among the young men. In his shade I took great delight and sat down. He has brought me to his banquet hall, and his banner over me is love. After reading the words of Scripture, Mr. Fry sat down and wrote about a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. Those words became the hymn, The Lily of the Valley. The song was first published in the December 29, 1881 edition of The War Cry, 
the Salvation Army National Magazine. Mr. Fry declared that he had found a friend in Jesus. He compared the beloved in the Song of Solomon to Jesus as the lily of the valley. One commentary explains, undoubtedly this lily of the valley symbolizes the sweetness, purity, fruitfulness, humility, and healing qualities of Jesus Christ. Fry could see only in Jesus and in trouble because Jesus had told him to roll every care on him because he cared for him. Jesus is indeed the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. one of my mom's favorite songs when she sings. I always laugh because, um, you know, I've heard my mom say she has other favorite singers, like Diane Susick. She mm-hmm. said that's her favorite singer, and that kind of offended me a little bit. But, <laughs> but um, no, and, and uh, so I know when she'll, she'll often listen to us here at concert, but she didn't sing my favorite. You mm-hmm. didn't sing my favorite. And uh, I love to watch my mom listen to the words of this song. And uh, I hope you enjoy the message this sweet message from a mom's heart. We have this moment, and maybe this Mother's Day you can't be with your children. And uh, so you have wonderful memories that you can look back on. You have pictures around you that can remind you of those special moments you've had. And maybe there's loss, and you are hurting this Mother's Day. I want you to know that God is faithful to be with you. Hold tight to those moments that he gave you with your child. They gave you joy on the journey because nothing can take away those memories. Hold tight to the sound of the music of living happy songs from the laughter of children at play hold my hand as we run through the sweet fragrant meadows making memories of what was today We 
tender words, gentle touch, and a good cup of coffee. those moments and I want to encourage you to join us at 2.30 the Bill and Bob Bob and Bill podcast (laughs) Dr. Roger Wilmore is going to be sharing part two of his message and we trust that you'll join us next week on Monday for worship live at 1.30 happy Mother's Day happy Mother's Day happy Mother's Day and God bless you